Hi, welcome to Tom's Youth. I'm James. And I'm Sarah. It's great to have you with us again. Uh, in these unusual times, uh, there's been lots of change and there's more change at the moment. Uh, some things are changing, but some things are staying the same. Uh, I know I found it uh, both nice and strange that I get to see some people in person now. Uh, our youth service will be staying the same, so we'll keep having videos every week. We hope you can join us as we watch for those, and we'll keep you updated about when we can return in person. Luke 7, 1 to 17. When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people who were listening, he entered Capernaum. There, a centurion servant, whom his master valued highly, was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. This man deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one go, and he goes, and that one come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. Soon afterwards, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. Then he went up and touched the bear they were carrying him on, and the bearer stood still. He said, Young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. Jesus went to Capernaum and he was met by the servants of a centurion as the centurion had another servant who was very ill. As Jesus approached the house with the servants, he was told to not come in because the centurion was not worthy of having Jesus come to his house and Jesus healed the ill servant. Jesus went to another town and saw a funeral procession. It was for the only son of a widow. He then went up to where the body was being carried and they stopped. He woke the boy and gave the boy back to his mother. These passages reveal that Jesus has power over sickness and death. I think that Luke included these two stories in his gospel because it shows what great faith looks like and it shows that Jesus has compassion on people and is willing to heal the sick and perform miracles which was prophesied about in the Old Testament. How do we respond to the Jesus that we've seen so far? We've seen that he's the promised king that's come to save his people. We also saw that he has authority to forgive sins and that he can even tell a paralyzed man to walk. And they do. I'm going to share with you two events today. The first is from a soldier who hears about Jesus. One of his servants is sick and he cares about this guy. So he gives the command to go and find Jesus and ask for his help. Jesus makes his way there, but before he could enter his home, the soldier runs out to stop him, saying, I'm not worthy for you to come into my house. Instead, simply give the command and the servant will get better. Jesus marvels at this guy's faith. He gets that he isn't worthy, but he also gets that Jesus is powerful and that he is good. 
The soldier returns to his home and finds that the servant is healed. Jesus didn't even need to see him. And this soldier becomes a model of faith for us as well. We aren't worthy. We don't have power to fix things. But are you ready to come to Jesus knowing that he is powerful and that he is good? The next event in Luke's gospel changes everything. Jesus comes across a funeral and it's a tragic one. It's the only son of a mother who has already lost her husband. This child was all she had left. And it's the only person that can provide for her. Now she's left with nothing but grief and pain. She's powerless to do anything. But Jesus is there. And he cares for this woman and what will happen to her. He tells her to do something impossible. He says to her, don't cry, as if she could just stop. And then he tells the dead son to do something impossible too. In verse 14, young man, I say to you, get up. Verse 15, the dead man sat up and began to talk and Jesus gave him back to his mother. The dead man sat up and began to talk. We've seen that Jesus has authority to heal people and forgive sins. But now we see that he has authority over death itself. He can tell the dead to live and they live. In verse 16, the crowd is filled with awe. They start praising God and they say, God has come to help his people. And he adds, we are all spiritually dead. One day we'll face a physical death too. But God has come to help his people. And Jesus calls us to live as well. To be spiritually alive by following him and having life to the full. And also to bring us eternal life, to save us from death itself. Jesus is powerful. Recognize his authority, just like the soldier did, and come to him humbly, trusting that he is good, and that he can give us life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus, who can give life to the dead, who can forgive the sinner. Thank you that he is good, that he is powerful. Help us to live for him and follow him all of our days. Amen. So um, I grew up in a Christian household. Um, my parents were Christian and I had learned about Jesus's what Jesus had done for me and how he had died for me from a very young age. But it wasn't until about year nine that it really um, hit home for me when I first pledged myself to my faith. Um, it was when one of my best friends had passed away. Um, and it was really hard, but it was the people's love for me and everyone else around me that um, it really helped me to see God's love in that time, and yeah. Um, so knowing God has really changed my outlook on life. Like, I'm not afraid of death. I might not particularly want to die right now, but still I'm not afraid because I know that when I die, I will be with him in heaven. Um, but it's also changed my mission in life, um, particularly to bring people to God and particularly for people with mental illnesses, um, such as depression, to help them to know that they are loved even when they feel like they're not. So let's pray to our God. Lord, we come to you in prayer and praise. We pray that you would open up your ears and receive our prayer to you. We praise you for all of creation and all of life and its beauty and its creativity. We praise you for your mighty hand in it and we pray, praise you for your plan that is Jesus, uh, your plan to save us and bring us back into relationship with you by his love, blood. We thank you that you raise those who are dead in sin back to life through Jesus who brings redemption and new life to those who are sick and you heal them by your mighty power. Thank you for your saving grace. Thank you for loving us when we didn't do anything to deserve it. We pray for Tom's youth during this time of isolation and during their studies at home and online. We pray you give them focus and organization to do the work they need to. 
help our youth to learn and study well. Help them to stay motivated and encouraged to learn independently. We pray that you would also help the COVID disease to be over soon. We pray that the restrictions on our country and on our lives would be over soon. We pray that you would be with all the frontline workers, the nurses and the doctors, helping them to heal and bring back to health those who are sick with COVID. Lord, we pray that you would be with any of our youth at the moment who are struggling or feeling isolated or lonely or down. We pray that you'd comfort them and encourage them. We pray that you would let them know that they are loved and that they are highly desired by you. We pray that you'd be with them, encouraging them and comforting them in heart. And we pray all these things now, Lord, Je Lord Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, that's all for today. Uh, if you're watching this with the premiere, we hope to see you shortly on Zoom. Bye.